Whoops. And we're live. Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos, everybody that is already here and waiting. Thank you for joining us tonight. I see Reseller Man and Erica Norton. Hi, guys. Welcome in. And Swag Maven is here. Welcome in. So tonight I have, are you a very special guest or just a guest? I'm just a guest. <laughs> He's just a guest. He's not a very special guest. Most of you guys know Justin from RBA Flips, and he's been on this channel a couple of times before. Mm -hmm. um, the last time he was on, we did the reseller panel with Lance. That's yeah, right. We, right. We did a work, we, yeah, we yeah. did a working hangout over here, and I did the pirate ship thing the very first time. Okay, so yeah, it's been three times. We did like a, I wouldn't call it a working hangout. Um, kind of just talking. <laughs> Two hours later, I had photographed three plush <laughs> and talked. Um, there's a lot of people in here saying hi to you. That's cool. Hey, Risa. I followed you over here. Um, but the first time he was ever on my channel, we talked about pirate ship. And it is a really good way to save money when you're shipping. But I still see in all of the Facebook groups and on Instagram, I still see a peep see a people. I see quite a few people that still have questions and they're a little confused. Um, so we're just gonna like, I'm actually gonna ask Justin a few questions of my own and then let him explain some stuff and then we'll open up the floor. Um, Wine Shark Picker wants to know if you're still awake or if this is pre-recorded. I'm still <laughs> awake. I stayed up past my bedtime to hang out tonight. Uh, yeah, I actually moved this up an hour too. So. <laughs> Hey, Landshark Picker, I'm doing good. How are you? I, we got snowed in today, so um, I don't want to talk about that. So, okay, here's my problem with um, Pirate Ship, and I'll tell you what our problem is, and then, Justin, you can explain it, and I'm sure that our problem we're having is the same thing I keep seeing other people having. Sure. So we'll have a heavy item, say, um, over a pound. Well, yeah, obviously. So it's over a pound, maybe two pounds. We'll say it's a pair of shoes or an electronic item, or, um, we've had some like collectibles go that are real heavy. Sure. Even, like, like we have plush that sing and they're, they're, um, they, what am I trying to say? They're electronic plush. They sing and dance and they're really, really heavy. Um, I'm trying to give all the examples of all the times that we've attempted to try pirate ship. Sure. We have not yet used it. Okay. Yep. So every time we sell something that's super heavy, that's going to be really expensive to ship through eBay system, um, we are putting it in a box, obviously with bubble wrap and peanuts, you know, protecting it. Then we're putting the box in a poly bag and we're measuring the poly bag and then we're entering the information into pirate ship. And the price we're getting from them is the same as the price from eBay. It is not saving any money. It is yep. very much the same. So what are we doing wrong? Sure. Okay. So, a couple of those examples, unfortunately, you're not – because you're top rated, right? You're top rated on eBay. Yeah. Some of those examples, like, for instance, some of your bigger um, uh, animatronic plush, let's say, uh, those aren't going to qualify for cubic. Um, and with pirate ship, like, let's say a pair of shoes, it, it, it comes down to depending also on the zone it's going to. to. So for me – and I think you, you're in Pittsburgh. So, like, West Coast, like, like let's say California is, like, the farthest we can ship, right? For, I think both of us, as far as like, you know, within the states, not talking Alaska or Hawaii, right? Right, the lower 48. Right. So, with shoes, what you want to, because I know you guys are, uh, you're snowed in, right? You didn't get the source. So, this week, y'all are going to be working on shoes and you're going to have to get disinfected and all that, right? Because I, I saw you post something about you're going to be working on shoes this week. No comment. Okay. So, when those <laughs> shoes sell, um, I'm assuming you probably, you probably already have these size bag star because you do plush and clothing and whatnot. But you're going to want to have on hand, and this is more so to the chat, um, for shoes on uh, to use the bag in box or or, uh, or soft pack for pirate ship, you're going to want to have a 10 by 13, which is kind of standard uh, clothing bag size. This will fit a lot of women's shoes, that kind of thing, you know, uh, not in a box. You're going to basically, what I do is I take a, a separate poly bag and I put them there and then I bubble wrap and I put it in here so it's nice and protected. Um, or for like a pair of men's shoes, you're going to want these. I think these are 15 by 10. So it's two inches longer, right? Gives it a little bit more room. You can fit a pair of shoes in there. Um, again, I, I put them in like a poly bag and I bubble wrap them. This is the way I do it. Um, obviously, if you're talking like a pair of really nice, like, this is for like bread and butter shoes, right? Like I'm talking like sub 30. If you have a really nice pair of like dress shoes, you're going to want to just go the regular route and not worry about pirate ship and, and 
you know, go that way just because you're, you know, your customer spent more money. But for like, let's say a pair of $25 sneakers, put it in the bag and just compare it. Sometimes it is going to be the same. Sometimes it's going to be less. A lot of times it's going to be less than the padded flat rate by probably about 15 to 20 cents, which doesn't sound like a lot, but at volume, 15 to 20 cents, as you know, does add up, especially with these new crazy post post crate. I mean, even like, I, I know what's going on with it. I know it's an overall like 12% increase across the board, but this whole like first class zone thing has me, my head spinning. Um, okay. So I guess I'm just, I'm really frustrated or confused because I keep seeing like flipping particles here just said they saved $8 on a cutting board. And um, my friend Colleen, the one I went to Florida with, you probably know who she is. Yep. Um, she is constantly talking about, I mean, she saves buku money, but she sells a lot of shoes too. Yep. But, and then every single time I have something that weighs a pound or more, um, we put them in a box first and then the bag. Um, it's just, it's always coming out the same or even more sometimes than what our thing is on eBay. So, okay. So yeah. So let me pull up pirate ship real fast. Is it normal to hit or miss like that? Especially if we're getting like the biggest uh, discount on eBay for no, I wanna, So I want to actually go to the site and make sure I'm going to, I'm going to screen share here. If that's okay, star. Yeah. Uh, do whatever you need to do, because this is like, since you were on, we've been trying it all the time. And Keith is like, you need to talk to Justin. You need to talk to Justin again and find out what I'm doing wrong. So do whatever you need to do so we can learn. Okay, cool. So I have the uh, the screen share. Let me know if you guys can see that. Okay. Everyone can see my screen. Yay. Good. Are you good, Star? You can see it? Yes. And I'm actually reading the chat too. Yeah. We're, we're putting the box in a bag with the measurements, the exact way you're supposed to do. Okay. So what you do, are you making sure you're selecting this option right here? Uh, soft pack padded or flat rate, uh, uh, or box in bag you're making, cause like, you don't want us like this. You want us like this. The box and bag option, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Okay. And then, uh, so what you're going to do next. Okay. So like this bag right here, right? Is this is 10, this is 10 by 15, uh, 15 and then 10 across. So we're going to plug in our, um, you know, our dimensions here. And let's say this pair of shoes weighs three pounds. Okay. So, uh, and let's say we're going to ship from my zip code to California. I do you always, always put in 90210? I do, yeah, because it's like, it's easy to remember because of the TV show. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do too. <laughs> All right, so let's just say the shoes are three pounds, five ounces, right? Um, you know, we're talking, let's say we're talking like a pair of uh, like Skecher boots, right? Not high end, but something, you know, you don't have to worry about boxing it, but, you know, something that would be relatively heavy. So let's just say a pair of Skecher boots. All right, so here we got our stuff. Let's look at shipping rates. Um, if you look here, it's eight dollars and forty cents, uh, forty six cents. Now, keep in mind, if we're talking a pair of men's shoes. Oh, I just sold something. Sorry. If if we're talking a pair of men's shoes, um, you're not going to fit that into a padded flat rate. At least I don't have any success with that. I don't know about you, Star, but I mean, if you're talking anything like bigger than a size nine in men's, I, I've never had any success there. So are you measuring the bag, what the bag is before you put the stuff? Correct. Stuff yes. In it? Yes. It has to. So, and that's, I had that information wrong last time we talked about this and I was uh, corrected by my good friend, um, the bearded picker. When I went over to Lonnie Groshel's channel and talked about the same topic, I got grilled in the comments. So you have to measure it like this, like before you put anything in it flat. Now what you can do to get the measurements down is you can cut the bag, right? So you could like, if you need it to, you could slice an inch off here. You could slice an inch off here and that's okay. You can cut the bag, but the measurements have to be whatever the bag is flat, nothing in it. Okay. Well, that's, we're doing that too. So somebody asked me what size bag I'm using. Well, that just depends on what we're putting in the bag. We have a lot of different sizes of bags. We even have some that Henry would fit in um, because of the plush that we deal in. So what size bag we're using really depends on what we're putting in it. We find something that's stupid bag thing will fit in and then yeah we have been cutting it down to and measuring it so we're doing everything right we're cutting it we're measuring it before we put stuff in it we're choosing the the um nice nice what in the world is happening over there <laughs> the auctions are ending oh, okay, okay <laughs> what the hell are you selling <laughs> i love when the auctions end that's great you're still on your screen share by the way we can't see your lovely face 
Oh, that's okay. Y'all don't want to see that. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> um, so we're doing everything right, but it's still coming out the same. So I maybe we're just getting so much of a discount from being top rated seller that it's the same. I don't it, it it really depends, Star. Like there are some times where I'll run I what I what I do, unless I know it's not gonna go pirate ship. Like let's say I mean, I'm trying to think of an example, a good example here. Let's say um Okay, this is a good example. Let's say I'm shipping this like coupon cutter, right? This this thing. Uh, this thing is obviously not going to go cubic rate just because of the size of it. The box this is going to have to go in. There's no need for me to really check pirate ship because it's going to be about the same. It's going to be the exact same, actually. Um, but can you, um, Keith had to explain this to me, but can you explain the difference between cubic rate and the other for the for the viewers? Uh, that's my ability. I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. Um, <laughs> well, just explain the difference between how yeah, you pack. Yeah. So, so basically the way eBay is set up is, um, everything is weight based unless you go past a certain dimension and then you get dimensional weight that kicks in, but not in your favor. Um, with pirate ship, the way it is set up is let's say I'm trying to think, I want a good example here. Okay. Let's say, sorry, this, let's just say this is shoot. Um, for the, Goodness gracious. Uh, for the sake of uh, imagination, let's say this is a five pound music box. This thing, mm -hmm. right? Not a, not a PC game. If this was a five pound music box, this I could fit into one of these guys. This is a eight by eight by four. I could then use a box resizer and get the, that dimensional uh, size down a little bit because it's not going to take up that whole space. You know what I mean? I can cut the box down. Mm -hmm. Then instead of paying by the five pound weight of this on eBay, I'd be paying by the dimensions of the box. Right. And a cubic inch is 3D. It's a 3D inch. Right. Exactly. Um, and I so, to explain this to me because I'm not a math person either. No, I, I'm not a math person. Like when you put dollar signs in front of numbers, it starts to make a little bit more sense to me. But yeah, I can't do math <laughs> unless it's money. Yeah, exactly. Um, My phone's on fire. Sorry. Uh, someone just mentioned it has to be 18 inches or less on the longest side. Everything we tried, but has been 18 inches or less, just to clarify, um, because it's stuff that's heavier, but not large. Like, right. Um, so yeah, we haven't tried anything that big. Um, but so back to the cubic, the cubic, sure. you have a limit. Is it like a hundred? Uh, I, I honestly don't know. Like a weight limit. I, I don't know. But once it gets so big, cubic inches, you can no longer use the cubic. I think once it gets over a cubic foot, like 12 inches cubic, like, you know, 3D dimension, I think once it gets over a foot, it no longer uh, qualifies. Uh, hold right. on. It's best for like really small, heavy items. So if you have the bigger ones, like shoes and that, that's when you're going to put it in the bag and measure it. Right. The only, the only time pirate ship is going to save you any money with shoes is, is if you can get it in a qualifying poly bag. So, and I'm sorry, I, I would, I think you probably have down below, you probably have some links to the bags y'all use, correct? For your plush and your clothes. Yeah, I have our poly bags down there. So guys, check that out. Um, if if you don't have them, like I mean, a lot of us I know are, are experienced uh, salt and peppered up uh, resellers, so you probably have the supplies. But if you don't have the poly bags and you want to give it a try, check out the links below. They are affiliate links for Star. They will help out her channel. But believe me, guys, she's not getting rich off of them. No, just some pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I just did an uh, how to set up your Amazon affiliate link video last night. If those of you that haven't seen it, you can watch it and set your own up. Um, but I did say in that video, it's not a lot of money, but every stream of income you can get coming in. If you have 10 streams of income, that's a couple of bucks every week. That's 10 sure. bucks. And, and every, like my, my viewers, they know that I'm kind of a stickler about certain things and I just have weird opinions, but I will say that I, I've never had an issue with affiliate marketing. I think it, it's beneficial because, uh, the person that has an interest in the product is getting, uh, preferably, uh, someone that's actually used the product and, ha and you know, enjoys the product. Um, and you know, it, it helps the, it helps the person out that, you know, that has the link and it's helping the person out that's buying the thing. So I think it's a mutually beneficial thing. Yeah, exactly. And they're not, they're not, it's not coming out of their pocket. Sure. So, um, hi, Noel, by the way, welcome in, hon. Um, she said, if you have questions, there's always someone available on pirate ship and you can text them and they can, they can help you. That is true. Yeah. They do have really good customer service and they do have like a, I'm sure you guys have seen it like on Verizon or Comcast or whatever you're <laughs> 
goodness gracious sir how many sales are you gonna have you're showing me up man well you'll have to wait till tuesday to see because that'll be the weekend uh the weekend update because oh yeah the post office is closed tomorrow guys thank you good update yeah um sales for me uh saturday and guys if you guys don't know um I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna are you okay if i spill the bean star She's nervous. She has no idea what I'm talking about. It's, it's a joke. It's another guys. I'm a oh fake. <laughs> guys, it, came, it was brought to my attention today. I'm a fake reseller and that my wife has a really good job. And basically I live off of her coattails. So, um, that's really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it took people this long to figure that out, but, um, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking, but, uh, no sales is, for me this weekend have been pretty mediocre. I don't know about you star. Um, I would say that yesterday the sales were not just mediocre. They were downright devastatingly depressingly poop i think it's the government shutdown to be honest with you man a lot of people that work for the federal government across the country aren't getting paid right now yeah um but today they were good good as far as activity okay so like yesterday our sales were poop they were good today um poshmark woke up today too but as far as activity that we've had more activity than normal, but it's all really low offers. Everybody wants everything 65% off. Yeah. And when you counter with something reasonable, they don't, they're declining. Um, but they've picked up today. I'm hoping they'll continue to pick up. I don't know. It could be the government shutdown. Um, I mean, who knows? I think it's, selling, well, so, so. Yeah, it, it, it's also January, right? I mean, a lot of people are getting hit with those like after Christmas credit card bills. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's like, oh shoot, I don't think I, I don't remember spending this much, you know. And then they're having to deal with that. So, I, I think no, I, I we had a best sell we can ever with 232 listings. See, that's kind of disappointing to someone with 1,900 like me who had an absolute. But that's relative, right? I'm like, sitting here with my phone doing this, saying I had an absolute shit weekend. Right. Yeah. yeah but, but Noel, that's awesome. Like, I, and like, I'm not taking away from your thunder at all. Cause I think that's amazing. And I'm very, very happy, but it's also relative, right? So like, you know, a slow weekend for me might be four or $500 in sales. That might be a great weekend to somebody else. It just depends on where you're at. Like, and, and I think Noel, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know you that well, and I'm sorry, but you're full time, right? Or, or yay, nay, part-time full-time. But you get what I'm saying, right? Start with that, like it, it sale, like slow sales are relative to the person and what their what their expectation is, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I actually was it last Monday that I put that on Instagram. Um, I had the the picture every Monday. I do the pile of our weekend sales, and I put the picture up. And I think it was last Monday, and I went to spiel in my what sold video uh, just about that same exact thing. Um, thank you for the. Super chat, Adam. And I think earlier Lance gave us one too. And we yeah, he did. Yeah, he said we were his two favorite cam girls. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Adam. And thank you, Lance, so much for the super chat. Thank you very much. Um, but I went into a spiel about that. How, okay, for the first point I want to make, it is relevant. So, 22 sales to someone like us is bad. Yep. To someone else, 22 sales would be the best That's thing wrong. that could happen to them. Right. And then to somebody over here, let's use Megan Winnie as an example with her 4,000 listings, 22 to her would be just the worst ever. For us, it's mediocre. It's, yeah, it's an okay weekend. To others, it would be amazing. And to others, it would be terrible. So it's all relevant on where you're at in your own journey and what your store is looking like. And then the second point that I'd like to make is just don't compare yourself to other people. It doesn't matter what I'm doing or Justin is doing or Noel is doing, you have to beat your own self. You cannot be me. You cannot be Justin. You cannot be Megan. You don't want to be me, yeah. guys. I, I'm a fake reseller. <laughs> you I love just gotta worry about where you're at. And if this week you sold more than last week, or you listed more than last week, or you sourced better stuff, you're fine. You are doing amazing. If you're still not doing as good as someone else, don't worry about that. Don't compare yourself to other people. I cannot stress that enough. You need to just focus on yourself and stay in your own lane yep. and life will be so much simpler and so much less stress. You guys, when you're only worried about yourself, honestly. True. Very good. True. Uh, that is really awesome for Noel. She's yeah, been struggled for a while with listing. So get it done, girl. Man. Good, job. good job. Noel. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Uh, let's thank you. Noel. Hey, auction professor. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Good guy, Don. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming in and joining us. Really cool to see you. 
Um, but yeah, Noel, congratulations, really, truly. I'm very happy your weekend's been good. Uh, reseller man, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the support that you give uh, my channel and, and Star Channel now. Um, awesome, awesome to see that super chat. I'm sure Star is extremely thankful. Yep, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, I have been seeing you around. You're like a regular around here now. Um, who said, auction professor, you're right in a way. It is all about how much money you're making, but there are folks who do have volume-based businesses. And to those people, the volume does matter. If you've set your business up to where you need to make X amount of sales with X amount of profit, volume can matter. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, Don's a really cool guy. Uh, he, uh, he's he been, yes, Don's just a cool I can't say enough good things about Don. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just kind of geeking out a little bit. I love the auction professor. <laughs> I, I think this is my first time meeting him. So hello, hi, thank you, welcome, Don. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a he's got a great channel. He he really knows his stuff. Uh, he he's expanded my mind on so many things I would never think to pick up. Kent Daigle. Wow. Oh, thank you, Kent. I appreciate it. That means a lot to me. All the support means a lot. Um, I know I say this all the time. But Justin can agree, without you guys, there would be no us. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, I'd still be reselling. Well, I'd be fake reselling without you guys. But it, it makes it more fun having you guys to hang out with. On well, we wouldn't. I guess I, I, I would probably still talk to myself on camera. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like in the beginning, anyway. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I, I, I can't think of anything else I want to ask you. Um, basically... We, we were doing everything right. So just to recap for everyone listening, um, Keith and I were trying pirate ship and we could never get the price below what eBay was quoting us. But according to Justin, we're doing everything right. We're measuring the bag flat. Yeah. You're, and then we you're, you're doing it right. It. it sounds like you're just not getting lucky. <laughs> We're just not. We're just not. Yeah. Um, and, and Star, obviously, you know, you and I are good friends. If you ever, like, if y'all are going to do a shipment and you're running into an issue, feel free to do a private hangout and I'll try to walk you through the best I can. Yeah, I'll probably be hitting you up tomorrow night because we sold, um, we sold a Nerf gun. A, well, crossbow. A Nerf crossbow. And I think we're going to try again with that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how big is it? Do you know, like, is it a relatively big one? I need to look at the thing. I don't know. Is it like this or is it tiny? You know, it's big. It's a crossbow. Size it matters. It does not. It does when it comes to the pirate shit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably too big. That's not what. She... <laughs> I've been watching The Office. <laughs> no, it's a great show. The Office is fantastic. Let's talk about The Office the rest of the night. No. no. Um, I actually used to not like The Office. I used to say it was boring. I know. I almost couldn't be friends with you because of that. And I decided to give it another chance, and I'm in season six. It's good. It gets better, so, right? The first season's rough. The first season kind of sucks, except for the one first of season of any show. They're setting up yeah. the show, and you have this first season of any show is bad. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so you've answered my question. We're doing everything right, and it's normal to, to not have a cheaper rate, right? Yeah, it, it's normal. And, and like, you know, I think it's just a, a stream of bad luck. I mean, it really depends on the items. Uh, it depends on the size, the, in the, the, the zone is more important. Cause like I've done times where like I have a pair of shoes and I'm shipping them to say North Carolina, I'm in Virginia. It's going to cost the exact same as eBay. Um, whereas if I'm shipping to California, I might save a couple bucks. Right. So it really depends on the zone to where you're going. And you're in uh you're in Pennsylvania. So you're a little bit more centralized as far as on the east coast right like you're you're more like uh like i'm further south you're kind of further up so some of those zones are a little bit different like california is the same for us but some of those other states are a little bit different you know yeah so i guess we'll just open up the floor for questions you guys um if you need anything explained to you about pirate shipping further or you have questions about it throw them up there and just will answer it and if he's okay with it, I'll just open up the floor to any questions you guys have. I'm, dude, I'm I'm an open book, man. I you know, sorry, you know I do my show. It's it's before Europe. Oh, I just saw something cool. Um, it's before Europe, but uh, I do a morning show every Monday through Friday, every morning, seven fifteen or seven thirty. I go seven fifteen on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I don't want to interfere with Peter Picker's show. Um <laughs> because he's just a behemoth now. But uh anywho, 
where was I going with that? Oh, pirate ship. One last thing I want to say about that before we go into questions is if you are not top rated on eBay and you have like, let's say you can't do one day handling or whatever to get that shipping discount, you should be doing pirate ship for everything because you're getting the commercial plus discount. Whereas on eBay, you're still paying, you're not paying the retail price, but you're not getting the commercial plus discount if you're not top rated. So if you're not top rated, you should be doing all your shipping on pirate ship. And okay. I so, um, Erica asked, do most people run their eBay business on volume? I don't know. Probably a lot of people do. I think it depends. Um, I think it depends. I think it, depends. It's, it almost depends on what is available to you in the area. So we have 99 cent clothing days, but we never find a lot of designer brands. And I went through this on my live haul last week. I said, if, if we were to try to run our business based on, oh, we're only picking the best of the best, we would literally be bringing two items on the weekend. Because you just don't find designer brands here. But we can get the mid-grade ones so cheap that we're making profits on mall brands that most people are making on the expensive ones, if that makes sense. Um, so we have had to build ours as volume-based just on based on where we live and what's available to us. Um, if we lived in an area where we could get electronics really, really cheap all the time, no, we wouldn't be volume based. Right, right. And, and a lot of it's dependent on the inventory that's available to you. And like, also, like, not everyone, guys. And I, I stress this. I stress this all the time. Not everyone is trying to be a million dollar eBay seller. Like, yeah, all of us want to live comfortably. All of us want to have stuff to do. But like, at the end of the day, I resell. For me personally, I can't speak for Star, but I resell because it's it allows freedom for me, guys. I have fibromyalgia. I had a lot of medical issues. I left a really, really good job um, in the corporate uh, sector, and I'm so much happier. Even though I'm not, I, I'll tell you straight up, I took a huge pay cut. I'm still taking a pay cut. That's fine because we're still paying our mortgage. We're still paying our bills. We still can do fun things. We just you know stream down some of the excess spending. But look, guys, like for me. Uh, reselling is not something I'm trying to make into a million dollar business. I don't want to ever have to manage anyone ever again. I'm perfectly fine running a one man show. It's just, I'm not trying to be a million dollar seller. I, I'm happy with where I'm at. Obviously I would like to grow a little bit, but you, you get what I'm saying? Start with that a little bit. Like everyone's got yeah. different aspirations with reselling. And it kind of goes back to that thing. Whereas you don't compare your business model or your, your goals with anyone else. Like mm -hmm. you need to set your own goals against, against well, yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And everyone is different too. Um, like Keith and I were very minimalistic people and we follow Dave Ramsey. So we won't buy anything on credit. We save our money up and we buy it out. Right. And we're very minimalistic and we don't need a lot of fancy things. Is that we like to have a nest egg. We're the kind of people that want money in the bank just to look at it, <laughs> but we don't want fancy cars or fancy house. We're right. it's, not, it's not your. It's nothing wrong with that. If that's your aspiration, it's just not your personal aspiration. Right, and I'm and I started this for health reasons too. Right. Um, and when I started doing it, it was basically just to you know make my half of the income coming in without having um, to go on disability or I can't work outside of the house. That's not even a possibility. I'd get fired the second day. Right. Um, Cause you'll have one of those days where you can't freaking move. You'll get out of bed. And you're like, I can't do it today. Yeah, There's days I can't yeah. get out of bed. There's days I can. And then I got to take a break every 10 minutes. There's days every 15 minutes I'm on the floor doing the yoga. The physical therapist taught me. Um, and I have a lot of limitations and this gives me the freedom to do all that. I can take breaks. <laughs> I can stretch every 10 minutes. I can take a day off if I feel like crap and I just want to take a pain pill and go to bed. Exactly. I'm not going to get fired. And right. it gives me that freedom. So I would like to make a lot of money as well. But um, until we make enough that keys home with me, we're not going to be million dollar sellers because I don't have the stamina and the ability to do that on my own. Correct. Right. And uh, and honestly, would you want to scale to that point where you're shipping out 70, 80 things a day? Like, okay, for instance, here's a great example. We have Don, the auction professor. He's been reselling, Don, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you've been reselling since like 1997 or 1998, basically OG eBay reseller. He's built his business to a point where his entire family is working the eBay business. His sons, you know, his children, his wife, they're all in, right? I, I mean, I, Don, I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to ask you to put in the chat, obviously, what you make. But you're probably uh, up there as far as sellers go uh, on eBay. But, like, that is, like, your aspiration, right? Where if my aspiration is to, you know, if I could 
you know, if I'm netting 60, 70,000 a year reselling, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like that's, that's great. You know, I, you know, I love the job making more, but I'm okay. Like that will get me by. Everyone has different lifestyles, uh, aspirations, dreams, goals, and you just have to. And develop. abilities because there, there actually is a lot of folks that tell me all the time, um, that, you know, I'm an inspiration for them because there's a lot of people that do this because of their health. Um, mm -hmm whether they have back issues, fibromyalgia like you, um, even people with mental health issues, they have a hard time sometimes working outside of the house and dealing with the stress, you know, and having a boss. And this this is, job is so perfect for anybody that has any kind of health issue um, because no matter what your abilities are, you can do something and you're not gonna get fired. Um, Cause you're your own boss. So like, are you going to tell yourself, well, you can't lift over five pounds and you had to take half a day off. So you can't do this. And that's not, it's just not, this is like the 100% best job for people with any kind of limitations. Right. It, it is a hundred percent. Um, like I said, you know, I have days guys where I can grind it out. I can list, you know, you, if you guys see the working house that we do from time to time, right. I, you know, we're on there seven, eight hours a day and I'm grinding it out picture and I'm BSing and I'm, doing listings and you know all that stuff but i also guys have days with the whole fibromyalgia thing and i have like this anxiety thing and all this stuff um there's days i don't get i don't want to get out of bed guys like honestly i, I you know it, it, it takes everything in me to go make a pot of coffee on some days i'm not i'm just gonna be honest and on those days i can i can check out and i don't have to worry about making an excuse for, to my boss i don't have to worry about having to work from home remote even though i like i can't hardly move because of my health stuff right like you know, I did have a job where I was blessed where I could, you know, work from home if I needed to, but it was frowned upon because I had a team of 10 people that needed me in the office. You know what I mean? Um, so this is this is perfect for me. And, and Star is very similar. You know, she had a great job. She was, uh, you know, in the health field and her back, she got her back got screwed up at work. And I mean, this job has afforded her the ability to make a living for herself and to help uh, her and Keith and her family. But at the same time, like if she needs a day to like be like, damn, my back is just gone. I need to like rest. I can't move. I mean, we talk quite frequently. So I'd say we talk at least once a day, wouldn't you say? I'd say we talk all day. Yeah, all day. On and, and off. And like, I know, I, I know like Star will message me. She's like, damn, I was trying to list these jeans and you know what? I just can't. My back will not allow me to work. Um, And I get it, man. And I think that's why me and Star are, are friends is because we kind of have that mutual. There's something, like, look, that's it we don't agree on everything and that's fine. But like, we had that mutual, like she's a free shipper. I'm not a free shipper. Doesn't mean we can't be friends. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, yeah. yeah. There's days he's right. There's days where the only thing I get done is sharing posh. And that's only because I can do it on my phone while I'm laying on my heating pad and dying and half high on pain pills. Um, and then there's days where I can get out of bed and I can make a video and maybe list 10 pairs of jeans and Hey, even do the dishes that, I mean, it just depends. Um, but it's, it's really good for people. I think that have any kind of limitations it, the freedom is good for anybody. Like who doesn't want the commute to be from your bedroom next door to the office, Absolutely. you know, who doesn't want to work in their pajamas, who doesn't want to make their own hours. And that's like another thing that's really good for me too, because even before my back injury, I, I suffer from really, really bad insomnia. I'm able to sleep when I shouldn't. And I'm not able to sleep when I should. So when I had to be on a rigid, strict, you know, schedule for a job, it was really hard for me. I was always tired and I never, ever slept. Well, now I can work until two in the morning and sleep till 10 or 11, make my own hours and work at night if I want and sleep in. Um, so that freedom is great too. I know like a lot of resellers that are like that. Casey's one of them. He's a night person and he's able to work whenever he wants and sleep in. Um, the, the freedom is just, the freedom with this job is amazing, but you have to be willing to work. You Absolutely. cannot just watch Oprah. Like if you have a health issue and you have to take a day off, that's one thing, but you have to work. You, you can't build a business by watching Oprah and playing video games. You really, it is a lot of hard work. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. It is a hundred percent. Like, uh, but you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I would much rather work like when I'm on, I would much rather work like a 12 hour, 
12 hour days and work for myself and all the work that I do benefits me and my family than like the 12 hour days I was spending in the office where, you know, I might, if I was lucky, get a quarterly bonus based on the work I put in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, this, this is definitely what you put into it. You get out of it. Right. Definitely. I see that all the time. The more I list on eBay, the more we sell, the more Keith lists on eBay, the more we sell. If I sit down and share posh and do offers to likers, we make sales. Um, so I see yeah, Adam's funny. He says, is it free shipping versus versus not the Hatfields and McCoys? Not really. Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't agree with not having free shipping. I think it's Look, I'm gonna say, for me, but. I'm going to say something that's going to blow everyone's mind. You can have completely different business models, whether it be social media or it be eBay. It doesn't mean you can't be friends on a professional level with somebody and on a personal level just because you have differing opinions or views. Like we're not going to see eye to eye on everything. That's the way the world works. But you know, it wasn't that long ago in this in America as a whole where we could have differing opinions and views on whether it be religion, politics, business practices, anything, and we could still have a relationship. You know what I mean? Like we can still be friends. We can still be civil and enjoy each other's company and each other's companionship. Like, yeah, we even have differing political views. Yeah. But like, that doesn't mean we can't be friends. Exactly. Um, what? I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you for a question. No, you're fine. Uh, what does it mean when someone puts one of your items in their bundle on Poshmark? Yeah. What does so it mean? On, question. <laughs> on Poshmark, typically when, people create bundles, they put more than one item in the bundle. And it's a well-known fact that a lot of sellers on Poshmark give you a discount for bundles. Um, you can make signs in Poshmark. I'm sure you've seen them. They're like a not for sale listing that has like information the seller wants to put out. And a lot of people put their sales on there. Yep. You can look at my closet, mine's right up front and it lays out however many items you have in your bundle the bigger your discount. So people will put items in there hoping for you to give them a discount. Now, why sometimes people only put one item in a bundle? I don't know. Michelle Lanton is right. It's like one hand clapping. I have no idea what they're doing because if you like an item on Poshmark, you're most likely going to get an offer from the seller just because you like it. Um, so I don't know why they sometimes just put one in there. I still send them an offer, but I don't give them like a bundle deal. It's one item. It's like I give them 10% off. But if they're putting more than one in there, they're, they're hoping for a discount. Because it's like a well-known fact that bundles on Poshmark are. Well, I was actually going to ask you about that before we went live and we got BS and whatnot. But uh, so I had a guy today on Poshmark. You, if you guys have been following me, I, I did expand into Poshmark. I don't know how I feel about Poshmark. I think I kind of suck at Poshmark. But someone dropped something in a bundle and I was like, okay, are they buying it? I thought it was like adding it to the shopping cart, but they didn't add anything else. So like, do I just like, what do I do? What am I supposed to do star? I need your advice. Just start from like 10% <laughs> off with like a box 15 shipping discount. Okay. All right. I'll try that. I don't know why they sometimes only put one. It really blows my mind because the whole point of having bundles on there is like, I mean, for instance, a couple weekends ago, we had one woman put five pairs of jeans in one bundle. And we gave her like 35% off. And that makes sense, right? Right. I don't know why some people just put one, but like Holly said, just said they're asking for a discount. Um, but typically it's like a well-known fact too on Poshmark. If you like an item, you're going to get an offer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. But if you guys have any questions, like I said, go ahead and throw them in the chat. If you Yeah, man, it's a party. Let's have fun. Anything you guys want to ask. I do want to make a special announcement. Of course. Yeah, it's your channel, man. Do what you got to do. Um, we were snowed in, so we didn't get to go sourcing. And somehow, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but most of you know that Keith and I keep a on-purpose death pile in the winter months because of where we live in case today happens and we can't get out to go sourcing this coming week we would have items to list until we go out next sunday well other than this pile right here which is all men's shirts these are for keith to do so other than this pile of men's shirts we don't have a death pile i don't know how that happened but i guess we've been working a lot <laughs> Um, I had, I went through like so many jeans recently. Um, so I don't know that that's a bad thing, right? Cause we've been productive, but right. 
This is it. This is our meth pile. That's but it? we have a lot of other piles around the house, and I would call them dead piles or the I don't want us. What so, about the shoes? Yeah, well, we couldn't go sourcing today. And I'm going to need stuff to list this week. So I'll tell you the really exciting news first. <laughs> We were upstairs looking around trying to find stuff. And there is a bag full of white clothes up there that we will get to if we have to out of desperation. But we would have to change our background back there to the black paper. Because um, I don't like white clothes. I'm white. And then we found a bag of clothes. I think I've mentioned the Lola bag before. They were meant for my full-sized mannequin. But I can't deal with her because of my back. Right. But I found three bags of plush. Holy crap. Three bags of plush that I either didn't even know I had or I had totally forgotten about. That's awesome, uh, man. So I found three bags of plush. And that's so your favorite. Looking, next to jeans, that's your favorite thing to list, right? Jeans are my favorite thing to list next to plush. Okay. Okay. Plush is number one. Awesome. And I still have a whole bunch of, I have a huge pile of plush. Um, but so I'll be working on those. I found three bags. I'm really excited, but that's not going to hold me over. So I brought up a box of um, handbags from the free inventory I got from my friend. So I have a box of handbags, but y'all, I washed and cleaned and prepped and magic eraser and buffed and whatever, 10 pairs of shoes used shoes. So I'm just putting that out there. I handled 10 pairs of shoes and I cleaned them. I'm reading something real quick. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't know that it's a mistake. I think people purposely put one thing in the bundle hoping for a discount. Um, but yeah, so there is over here all. A little box full of 10 pairs of shoes that are all clean and pretty and ready to be photographed. And I'll probably be getting to them on Tuesday because tomorrow I really want to get into the plush. Like I'm so super stoked that I found three bags of plush I forgot about. There is a Build-A-Bear My Little Pony in there. There is a ton of Pokemon plush in there, Valentine's Day and Easter plush. So I really, really want to get to those tomorrow. Super Mario and Luigi are in there. Nice. Um, Nice. So, yeah, I'm really stoked about the plush. Like, I can't wait. So that's going to be tomorrow. But the shoes are clean. They're in a box and they're waiting. But while I was going through that free inventory we got, before I get too confusing. So our whole third floor is divided in half and one room is unfinished and we call it the serial killer room. That's where we keep a lot of stuff. And that was where I found the plush. Down on stairs in our foyer is where we have all the stuff that my friend gave me, and we're just bringing it up like a couple boxes at a time to go through. I went down there to find the handbags, and I looked inside of a bin, and I found like 10 more pairs of shoes all new in box. So those ones are like easier for me, you know, because they're new. Right. But uh, I don't see Megan's here. Hi, Megan. Someone said, I love how you're so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited about the plush. I really am. And I think I should be excited about the shoes because I finally, um, after months and months and months of buying these, yes, it took me months to buy 10 pairs of shoes. You guys don't even understand what it takes in a store for me to poke it with one finger. Whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I bring them in and I put them all in this row in the foyer and I spray them with Lysol and then they just sit there. So... I should be excited that I got over it and touched them, but I'm not because I still got to touch them again to freaking photograph them. And you just need to like exposure therapy yourself, man. That's what I did with YouTube is like, I was like nervous as hell getting in front of a camera and said, screw it. I'm gonna start doing a show before I'm showered or do anything. I was going to go in there looking crazy. And it, you know, I can't look any worse. Right. So just like what you need to do start is take a shoe, rub it around your face a little bit. Uh, no, really put your, no, li listen, I'm exposure not therapy does not work. I have held a tarantula and petted her. <laughs> I even thought she was look, soft look, and like, I licked lick, her pink lick toes, but I'm still scared of spiders. Look, lick it and like put your hand in it. Just get to know it a little bit. You know what I mean? Rub it around. Look, you're not going to get like, you're not going to get like herpes and you're not going to get. Yeah, I'm going to get gone to sip for herpilades. 
Oh my goodness. You'll be fine. Look, I'm telling you, man, I get down and dirty with shoes. I list shoes all the time. I've no, I, you know, I've yet to break out into hives. Oh, I almost knocked it over. Sorry. <laughs> nope. No. And it doesn't work. Exposure therapy does not work. I have held a tarantula. I'm still scared of spiders. I am still scared of heights. I do all the things you're supposed to do to get over your fears, and it doesn't work for me. Yeah, that's but great. here's the thing. Here's what does work for me, and I'm sure you'll agree. Once I get these 10 pair photographed and listed, and the money starts rolling in, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's I'll get over it real fast. I'll be yeah. like, oh, money. Look, so here's the thing. Sorry, and I don't mean to gross you out, but you know what grosses me out more than shoes? It's plush. Because think about it. Kids are like, you know, I've seen, like, I have nieces and I have nephews. I don't have children of my own yet. Um, oh, if you don't know, Star, this is the year of uh, Operation Insemination. So, you know, um, announcement. But anyway, it got awkward and silent. That happens a lot. Don't worry about it. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, but yeah, kids like sneeze and stuff and they get runny noses and everything. And like, I'm trying to get out of that. So like what you're dealing with with shoes, I guess what I'm saying is because I have a bunch of plush. Remember all those plush I sent you photos of, Star? Yeah, and I'm scared to list them because of the same reasons you're scared to list shoes. So maybe this week we can both get out of our comfort zones. Well, what I do with plush before they even come in my house, they get stained. So um, they're sterilized and we run the steamer over them out like in the foyer part before they even come in my house. And allegedly steaming things, sterilizes them, gets rid of any mites or bed bugs, germs, all that stuff. And then if they're dirty, I clean them with awesome. But, um, and like clothes, like some people will tell me they're more grossed out about jeans than shoes, just because thinking of a woman's jeans, I'm not going to go there, but you know where I'm going. But we also wash and dry all of our clothes before they come inside the house. So anything that I can wash and dry or like sterilize with heat, I'm okay with. The shoes, like I said, I line them up and spray them with Lysol. Right. But I'm still more worried about somebody's nasty, hairy, hobbit, sweaty feet. Sweating with toes and toe jam and feet and sweat. <laughs> than anything else. So I'm assuming Star, guys, it's not going to surprise me, but Star does not have a foot fetish. Nope. <laughs> someone, I saw someone mention buying shoes on clearance. Um, probably, are you new to the channel? Because <laughs> there's no such thing as clearance in Pittsburgh. I have done so many videos about how I've tried to retail arbitrage. Uh, clearance in this town is considered 10% off in all places. That just there's no clearance. You go to Walmart clearance. This used to be ninety nine ninety nine. Now you can get it for ninety eight seventy five. <laughs> do I blacklight my plushies? Yeah, I just get out my CSI kit and do that. I mean, if you really wait, want wait, to get into really, it, I, I would hate to blacklight plushies. God knows what you'd find. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, but I mean, if you really want to get into it, you guys are touching athletes' foot, so that's true. And I will tell you this: I also don't. I would not want to take a blacklight to men's jeans. I mean, I'm sure everything is pretty gross, but um, well, you know, like I said, there's someone else that I don't get used real use shoes. Trust me, I don't have any real use shoes. The ten pairs that I have all look new. Um, I don't actually one of them is new, but I had to get I had to clean the they wrote on the bottom with permanent marker. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, I have a new pair with tags and everything that was already Lysol just because it was in the Goodwill. But, I mean, I'm I, like all the clothes we get, we literally wash and dry before they come in the, in the main area of the house. So that I'm okay with. And the plushies I do sterilize. Obviously, anything you're going to find with a black light on a plush is going to feel crunchy on the fur, and I wouldn't even buy it. Like, I look my stuff over before I buy it. Oh, man. If I come across some crunchy plushies now, I, like, it could just be, like, Kool-Aid that's filled up. But now you're going to have that Im image in my head. I'm going to have to go buy a black light. Thanks, Star. <laughs> Do you have an affiliate link for a black light? I'll buy it from you. <laughs> I mean, I, do, I look everything over really, really well in the store. Um, 
No, here, here's the thing with it is I just think everything, like anything you're selling used, you can get a stereo, like, you know, a used stereo, like a vintage stereo. And, it, you know, someone didn't wash their hands after they took a poop, you know, and play with an wait, 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 wait. Let's even go a step further. You can go to Walmart, Target, anywhere that sells new items and bring home something somebody sneezed on, yep. coughed on, yep. touched after they went to the bathroom and didn't wash their hands. Or just, you know, down south scratching. You never know. So even when you, you go somewhere with new stuff you, and people try things on and put them back on the rack. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent true. I mean, dude, I've seen some nasty stuff, dude. Okay. I've seen inside of a Walmart. This is no joke. I've been getting into a lot of like retail arbitrage stars. You know, I've talked to you about it a little bit, but I went to a Walmart a couple weeks ago and there was a freaking baby's diapers when I just left in the middle of the store filled with, with like green smungy grossness. It was bad, dude. It smelled really bad. I was like, who leaves a dirty diaper in the middle of a Walmart? I felt so bad for the employee that had to pick that up later. Oh, but yeah, I mean, everywhere you guys go, there's gross people sneezing, coughing, picking their butt and touching stuff. I mean, people are generally gross. It's true. And don't want, I mean, how many people have you ever seen in a public bathroom that leave without washing their hands? Or they do the number where they turn the faucet on, run their hand into the water once, and then they leave? That's not what... I worked in the healthcare field. You got to sing happy birthday with hot water and soap to consider yep. yourself clean. Yep. Um, but people always just like run their hand under it or. That's why I, this is a, a tool of the trade guys. Hand yeah. Water. I have it in my purse and yeah. seats, keep it. In at the your car. <laughs> I, I, yeah. And then as soon as you get home, then this is something Holly will say too. Even if you're not out thrifting, if you're just going to the grocery store or um, stores with new items, every time you go out and come home, wash your hands first thing when you come in the house and really wash them. Turn, make sure the water's warm. Here I am back to my healthcare field teaching you guys, but make sure it's warm water. Make sure you have soap and don't just wash like this. You guys got to get the backs of your hands and in between your fingers. And they always taught us if you can sing happy birthday, by the time you're done, you're clean. And then you can rinse your soap. But don't rub when you're rinsing. Like when you're washing, rub. And then just kind of rinse like how you see surgeons do. Right. And then ideally, like at your own house, turn the faucet off. But ideally in public, you want to use a paper towel to turn the faucet off and open the door to leave. But yeah, but, I mean, germs everywhere, guys. Uh, a study came out a couple weeks ago that McDonald's little touch screens in the restaurants is uh, covered in about I think it was like 92% fecal matter. So, you know, yeah, there's Holly saying about washing your hands as soon as you come in the house, as soon as you come in the house. And if you guys ever go eat when you're out thrifting, make sure you wash your hands. Yep. And I know that sounds like common sense, but I know that there's gotta be somebody out there who's out thrifting runs through a drive through just to be quick. And without even thinking, takes their cheeseburger out. No, wash your hands. About wash your hands. And I think Justin Pac-Man mentioned having Keith do the shoes. No, it's not going to happen because he hates them more than I do. Really? He won't even touch them at all. Really? Okay. I didn't know that. See, I didn't yes. Know. If he okay. sees them in the store, he comes and gets me and says, can you come look at these? I think they're worth money. Like he knows the brands to look, but he for. he won't he won't mess with him. He was like, sorry, and like you have to bust out the gloves. Now look, I keep another thing I keep, and I'm sure you do too, Star. I don't know where mine are at. Hold on, uh, I keep these guys. <laughs> I, so I say this, but I've sent photos to Star. And she laughs at me when I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'll put these on these late. I have stuff. those. I yeah. have those. Yes, I have. Uh, what are those gloves? I'm not gonna get up and get them, but I have gloves. Um, mainly for the shoes. Like I said, most of the stuff that's not plush, we wash it before it comes in, you know? Yeah. We're fortunate enough that our house is divided into like four floors and the main air, most of the main living area is all on the second floor and the first floor is the basement with the washer and dryer and then we have the foyer and the second floor and then upstairs is all storage. But um, I, like I said, I steam my plush before they come in and I look them over. So if they had, if they had anything on them, or were crunchy, and crunchy can be snot or spit too, you guys. I mean, just to be gross, but 
Just look your stuff over before you buy it. Yeah. So real fast, um, Star, if it's okay with you, uh, I kind of took over the uh, – because I was giving you a hard time about your shoes, and we kind of took over the Q&A. Guys, if you have any last-minute questions for Star or myself, please put them in the chat. Uh, I didn't mean to uh, to go into cleanliness is, is next to godliness. Hey, but that's important because it we're is. all thrifters. It's important. It you all have to be careful when you're thrifting and washing your hands and carrying your sanitizer. Um it's, it's an important thing to be aware. I mean, I do come from the healthcare field. So, you know, every year we had to take seminars on how to properly wash your hands. And do you know how germs survive? Um, but it is a, a good thing to be aware of. Um, yeah, Noel's right. Your purses are dirty. So you, you should actually, if they're washable, you should be taking all your stuff out of them and flipping them inside out and running them through the washing machine like once a month at least. You don't have to put them in the dryer. If you think you would ruin it, you could hang them by their, their handle and let them dry. If they're not washable, you could take everything out and spray them with Lysol once a week or wipe them out with disinfectant wipes. These are all things I learned from being in the healthcare field. And it's surprising how gross the world really is. You just have to kind of decide that you're just going to live with it. <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys do have any more questions... Throw them up, anything, anything at all. We want A anything, that. anything at all, guys. Honestly, at this point, I I don't care. Uh, you guys know me. I'm. I, it's a wonder Star has me on her channel because I, I try to keep it nice and uh, good here. But sometimes, man, I. Uh, this is a, I don't I don't see anything wrong with this topic. I'm a lot. We are all okay. The whole world is disgusting. I'm going to tell you that right now. I learned that in the healthcare field. And even going to the supermarket is gross. But we're all thrifters. We all touch used items. So this is a very good topic for us to, to all be educated about. Swamp Picker says it's past your bedtime. He's not wrong. My purse is also crossbody. I won't buy purses unless they're crossbody. And it doesn't leave me either. So if I'm out in public, it sits in my lap while I use the restroom. My seatbelt goes underneath of it. It's always on my body. But I have to keep it really light because of my back. So I have a lot of crap in my car that I need, but it doesn't go in the part. That's not even important. <laughs> you see, I cut off on tangents too. It's fine. Oh, dude, that's like 90% of my content is me just like. Yeah. Like so 30 days or 60 days on free returns and how long for handling time? James D asks. I only have 30 days on free Same. returns. Same. They don't need longer than that. The same rule. I agree. I agree. Um, and my handling time is same day cut off at 2 p.m. My handling time used to be that. And then it was stressing me out too much. Because so, I like to get all my packaging done before I start my day. So I, I just do one day handling. The same day thing was stressing me out. So I just I could put the kibosh on it. Yeah. Pair had pictures. Uh, right. hygiene, yeah. hygiene is important. And we do all become complacent. Like I said. You don't have to put in the chat if you're guilty, but think about it to yourself. Have you ever been guilty of going through the drive-thru to get a quick bite to eat while you're out thrifting? And did you wash your hands before you ate the fries? Well, the everyone, bathroom? everyone's guilty. Everyone. We've it all is, done it. Um, We've all ate our fair share of fecal matter. Just keep that in mind. Probably on your toothbrushes, to be honest. But Oh, how, yeah, it definitely is on your toothbrush because people go in there, they take care of their business. If you have your toothbrush and a toothbrush holder, that, you know, that, that aerates and, you know. Well, that's why you shut the lid before you flush. Yeah, but I mean, even still, man, some of that, some of that vapor is getting on. Right, but you're supposed you know? to shut the lid and have your toothbrush is in one of those. Yeah. <laughs> the <thing. laughs> it's a little thing. Well, to go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord yeah. all right guys it's now 21 and up <laughs> here at the here at the hippo hut <laughs> toothbrush plastic dealios that go over the bristles and yeah they, they also have, they have like the infrared things now too that are like cleaning they clean your toothbrush i don't have one but like i've seen it it's like an infrared laser you put it down on uh noel i still love you no matter what you do so um, I think we were talking before we got about the fecal matter and the toothbrushes. Oh, same day handling. Yeah. Um, mine is at <laughs> Hippo's After Dark. These two could tell you some stories. These two. Anyway, <laughs> we keep getting distracted. Um, our handling cutoff is at two because I Keith still works outside of the house. Um, 
should be late spring when we're ready for him to fire his boss and come home full time with me. That's awesome. Um, but he doesn't get home from work until about two thirty, and I cannot do it by myself because of my back. I need his help. So certain things, though, like how you were talking about being stressed out, there are certain items in our store, like um, DVD VCR combos and things that are going to take a while to package. We have those on one day handling because when he gets home at two thirty, he does he doesn't want to stress about it. Like he wants time, that and that's sense. understandable. Yeah, I get that. So those things have a, a one day, so he has time. Um, we actually just hit 10 o'clock. That noise was my posh party starting. That's how I know it's 10 o'clock. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and end it because it's been an hour. So if you have any, do you have any last words of any wisdom or anything you want to leave? I, I don't on? have, guys, I don't have any wisdom for you. But if you if you want entertainment and you don't want to take someone too seriously, which, because I'm not a serious guy and I'm not a real, real, real stuff. Really, I can't even talk. So I'm, yeah. But yeah, I have a channel, guys. It's RVA Flips. Uh, Star did link it below. If you get a chance, go check it out. We have fun over there. But you know, come over there with a sense of humor. And and if you get easily offended, you may want to stay away. Because uh, Star is a very good person. I, I'm I'm not a very good person. So go check out the channel, though. I would appreciate it. I just keep a family friendly channel. I don't know that I'm a good person. <laughs> good. I, yeah, I, my channel is not not family friendly. It's just you know not puritanical. Puritanical is the word I'll go with. <laughs> You're not even yeah. that what I'm talking. Guys, it's past my bedtime. I'm delusional. But yeah, go check it out if you want to. I got some fun stuff on there. Uh, and if you don't want to, that's fine too. It, it It's cool either way. I love you guys all the same. Yeah, and Justin now has a Facebook group as well. So his YouTube channel, his Instagram, and his Facebook group are all down in the description box below for your convenience, as well as my new Facebook group. Come join us. We have a lot of fun in there. Um, Thank you to everyone who showed up tonight, all my mods. Thank you to Justin for coming on the show. You're a mod as well, but you were actually on the show today. So thank you for coming on and being with us. Thank and you for having me. Always fun. I always enjoy coming on here. Yeah, we have fun when you're here. Um, and thank you to all the mods, like I said, and to everybody who showed up. And thank you to everyone who gave super chats. I do 100% appreciate it. And I say this every week, but you guys in our business, time is money. So the fact that you take an hour of your life to be with me every Sunday is pretty amazeballs. So <laughs> I love it. You guys are great. Um, smash the like button before you leave, if you would. And um, if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us feed all the hungry hippos. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos. You guys have a wonderful evening. And I have to get up to go turn this off. So, um... You guys, I love you all. Thank you. Bye. See you in the morning to a lot of you. 7.30-ish. <laughs>